Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. <coughs> Dear brothers and sisters all over the world, uh, welcome to the Tazkiyah workshop session number four in which we discuss the ways to purify our hearts. And uh, with due permission of Your Excellency, Hazrat Peer Tariqat Rehbari Shariat, Hazrat Mufti Maulana Mufti Munir Ahmad Akhun Sahab Dhamad Barkat Uhmul Aliya, um, I would like to discuss the further points on Tazkiyah. So far we have discussed four points and today we are going to discuss point number five and point number six. Uh, point number five is uh, Bayato Taskia, which is the pledge and uh, purification of hearts and point number six is uh, Sohbat Sheikh, the company and the, the presence of your Sheikh in your life. So talking about the Bayato Taskia, uh, it has two components uh, like the name says itself that pledge uh, with your Sheikh, the promise that you make with your Sheikh and the purification of your hearts. So purification of your hearts is of paramount importance in our life. It's, uh, it's of such an utmost importance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has claimed clearly in Quran Majid that anybody who came on the day of resurrection in front of me with, with his children or his wealth will not benefit him except for the one who brought a purified heart. So Allah has put a great deal of duty upon us how to purify our hearts and these majalis, these workshops are right there for us how we can help ourselves to purify our hearts. So purification of the heart should be our utmost uh, priority in the world. We put prior priority for everything to accomplish. Uh, where is our priority f to purify our hearts? We will not get a second life to purify our hearts. This is the life, this is the one-time deal that Allah has given us. We have to avail of it to purify our hearts. Like I said that no matter how much you have been successful in the world is not going to help you succeed in the world hereafter except for those people who have been successful in purifying their hearts and that is what will be counted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he is worthy of uh, my forgiving and my blessing on that day. So how can we accomplish and achieve that purification of heart? It comes through a process and that process is the bath. You know, you make a pledge, you make a promise to a saint, to a Sufi of your time, you go in his company and you make a sincere and formal pledge to him that uh, here I am uh, with all my presence and, how, and, and my sincerity that I want to make pledge with you on the matters of deen uh, that I want to correct myself, I want to correct my intentions and I want to be um, in the, uh, I want to be successful in the world hereafter. Uh, what is bayat? Uh, it is sort of a mentorship, right? We, in order to learn anything in the world, we adopt a mentor, right? We stay in his company, we try to spend more and more time in his company, only then you accomplish and you learn the skills and, and, and and secrets of that trade. So is true for spirituality that you have to join hands of a Sufi, of a Sufi saint who will guide you uh, navigate through the complex path of spirituality. Um, the definition of bath is that you make a formal pledge or promise to your Sheikh that here I am and I want to abdicate, I want to, for, for, I have want to abdicate and give up all my sins, I want to guard against my sins and I, want, I will perform all my, uh, all, I will obey all the rulings of Islam as Allah has commanded and I will try to stay away from all the sins and God forbid if they ever, ever happen by me, I am ready and willing to commit uh, my sincere repentance again and uh, make tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these are the matters of deen on which you make a pledge to, 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 the, to the Sufi saint. Why is it important to have a bath? First of all, this is a formal link uh, and uh, requirement to achieve the purification of the heart. It also is important because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has directly ordered us to do this. Uh, in his ayat, Ya ayyuhallazina amanu taqullaha wa kunu ma'asadiqeen. If we analyze this beautiful ayat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is acknowledging that you have iman, you have embraced iman and faith, and you have also been, uh, you, you are also uh, muttaqi, you are also fearful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he does not stop there. He goes on to third step, wakunu ma sadiqeen, that you have to be with the truthful people and be with truthful people. 
so that you may be successful in the world hereafter. So just embracing Iman is not enough, just embracing uh, fearfulness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not enough, but to stay in the company of a, of a sheikh, of a Sufi is very important to, to achieve accomplishment for the world hereafter. And uh, uh, by following uh, the commandments of uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam followed suit and he uh, used to he used to uh, take pledges from uh, from his uh, sahaba kram uh, on different matters so that's another topic we are coming to that in a in a short while but uh, this is the exact sunnah of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that he would uh, take pledges from uh, sahaba kram on matters of deen the third benefit of uh, making bath with somebody is that it gives you a very delicate focus. It gives you a very fine focus in your life. Because if you are not attached to one single entity, you are all over the world. You are listening to different shuyu who are all okay, who are all correct in their, in their, in, in their, in their entirety. But they have their different approaches towards one common goal. Now, how many approaches will you adopt in your life? to attain a goal you cannot you cannot be uh, on different places you cannot follow just many tracks to go to one uh, destination you have to follow one track so when you associate yourself with one rightful person he takes you to that final destination which is the destiny which is the goal for all shuyukh in the world so it gives you that fine focus that you need in your life um, how bath works this is also very interesting people just think that it's a formal pledge and that's it you came in the company of a sheikh you made a formal promise and that's it no this is not it once you come in the in the order or in the silsila of a um, of a of a uh, spiritual order you get connected to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam through chains of uh, saints that have been from uh, from your Shaykh until Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is the final powerhouse, powerhouse of all spirituality. From him flows the, uh, the, the, the flows of spirituality through different saints until it comes to your Shaykh. And then your Shaykh transmits it to the student depending on how eager, how keen, how receptive he is and how clean his heart is. So this flow of spirituality and spiritual energy and, and faz starts when you make a formal pledge. So this is how bath works. Uh, now this is very important here that uh, the more cleaner, the more pure your heart is, the more cleaner and the more, um, more uh, clear your heart is from your sheikh, your receptacle, your heart is your receptacle. So the clear, the more clear your receptacle is uh, from sheikh, the more faz, the more benefit you will receive from, uh, from your sheikh. Because that faz is coming from uh, uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam spiritually and that faz has to be received in a very clear pot. If that part, if your heart, the part of your heart is not clear, it will come to your heart, but it will come in a very, in a dirty manner, and that may not benefit you. So we have to have a very clear thoughts about our heart. We have to have a full faith on our on our sheikh, on our um, on our mentor, and we have to think him that think about him that he is the most competent and he is the most um, most uh, um, expert person in my life to be able to navigate me through the through the process of the sawuf. Uh, here I would like to just for the sake of everybody's understanding I would like to highlight some forms of baths or pledges that were operational or that were in force at the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Uh, one was bath Islam, the other was bath Hijrat, the other uh, third was bath Jihad, and the fourth one was bath Taskiya or bath Toba. So some of them may not be operational today, uh, but Bayt Taskiya is definitely in force today, and you can go in the company of any sheikh and make Bayt Taskiya with him. So just highlighting, you know, briefly, uh, what was Bayt Islam at the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam? If anybody decided to come in the fold of Islam, he would present himself in uh, the blessed uh, in the blessed majlis of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he would uh, he would abdicate all shirk and uh, polytheism and he would uh, embrace Islam and he would say ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna muhammadar rasulullah so that was bath islam that he entered in the bath of in the fold of uh, Islam by pledging to uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam 
Bayat e Jihad was, uh, uh, was used to be done in battlefield that uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa would take promises from his uh, companions that you will not flee the battlefield if, uh, uh, if you start to feel that you are losing the ground. You will stay till death and you will fight in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Bayat e Hijrat was another bayat or pledge that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to take uh, from uh, Sahaba Ikram companions uh, at the time of migration from Makkah to Medina. That's also documented, well documented in Quran and Ahadith. And the fourth uh, form of pledge or taskiya was taskiya, uh, 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 the fourth form of, uh, of uh, uh, bayat was bayat e Tawbah or bayat e taskiya. And that was the most prevalent one and that is even prevalent today. What that meant is that anybody who wants to make a sincere repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he would come uh, in, the, in the company of Shaykh, he would make a pledge with him that, um, oh my Shaykh, I, I want to abdicate, I want to give up all my sins and I want to follow all the rulings of Islam, I want to stay away from sin, I will not usurp any rights of people around me and uh, I am ready and willing to do any repentance if uh, I accidentally happen to do any sins again. So this is the uh, Tawbah and uh, 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 Bayat e Tawbah or Bayat e Taskiya. Uh, Hazrat Of bin Malik Ashjai is a very prominent uh, Sahabi of his time and uh, during the times of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he narrates a very beautiful incident and hadith in which he describes that uh, we were uh, probably nine or eight or seven people in the blessed company of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa asked us uh, what happened to you guys why don't you pledge on my hand so these guys uh, did not know what to say they said ya Rasulullah uh, tell us uh, what, what we should pledge on with you. So he said, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam advised them, you should make a pledge, you should make a promise on my hands that you will um, embrace the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you, uh, you will only worship him alone and you will not associate partners with him. And one thing he said quietly, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to his uh, uh, followers that do not ask anyone for anything. So Hazrat Of bin Ashjai, Hazrat Of bin Malik Ashjai Rahmatul Anho says that after that I saw the condition of those companions who were present at the time of bath that they were so careful, they got so careful in their dealings with other people that even if their flock would fall on the ground they would not, not ask anybody to pick it up for them. They would get off themselves from their ride and they would pick it up themselves. They would na not ask anybody for any help because nobody can help you. Only Allah is the helper, only Allah can help you. So only keep your eye on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is the source of all powers and all help. Uh, moving forward, uh, some misconceptions and mis misrepresentations have been uh, there in, in the field of tasawwuf. Unfortunately, as the time passed and uh, you know we got away from the blessed time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, some misconceptions and uh, misrepresentations in uh, different matters of deen came up. S uh, so was the case uh, and still is the case with tasawwuf that some fake people pretending to be Sufis and uh, saints and true saints they came up and they started misguiding the, 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 the gullible and the simple people, uh, lay people of the world and those simple people they just fell, uh, they fell in the trap of those uh, fake people. Now the fact is that uh, those saints, those fake saints are present around is a testament itself that the genuine saints are also present because the, you find a copy or duplicate of anything of which the genuine is present in the world. So it's your duty and role in the world to go and find out the genuine saints and genuine Sufis. Don't fall prey to the, to the false sainthoods, uh, false saints and phony people. They will definitely misguide you, mislead you, misrepresent you for in deen and they can derail you from deen. So it's very important that we, um, we put our efforts in finding the right shaykh, the truthful person in our life which Allah has uh, uh, pointed out to that wakunu uh, ma That it's our duty to find out the right people in the world. Just like for any other field we go and we tend to find out the certified personnel in, this, in that field. Right? Only then we feel confident and join them or uh, you know, make agreements with them. So you should find the right person 
uh, uh, right saint uh, and then join hands with him. Uh, number po uh, point number six of um, of the of the uh, tasawwuf is sohbat uh, murshid or the company of your sheikh. Uh, this is a very beautiful and a very important topic because uh, uh, if you if you make a pledge with the wrong person, you're going to go nowhere. In fact, that will destroy your life. So you have to uh, you have to be in the so in the in the company of so uh, of your murshid of your sheikh uh, who gives you the who gives you all the benefits of being in the order and silsila of your uh, of 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 uh, tasawwuf. Uh, Ali Allah, they are the visionaries. You know, they don't just look far; mm -hmm. they look beyond. And that is the beauty with Ali Allah that they are so close to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala that Allah has given them uh, so special power and such a help to them that they are able to guide you for what is going to happen to you beyond this world. That is the world hereafter that you are getting ready in the company of Sohbat -e Murshid. Uh, it is again of very paramount importance that you. Um, how you because you can learn deen you can you can read volumes and volumes of books on tasawwuf but you cannot understand tasawwuf unless you come in the sobat of your sheikh this is very important that you people today just uh, feel that they are suffice and they are enough that they have uh, learned they have read so many books on imam ghazali imam rumi and those and uh, saints and uh, they think that that is enough for them to be uh, perfect in spirituality no they have just learned the knowledge they have not understood the knowledge in order to understand and get the deeper meanings and the true flavor of things you have to be in the company of your sheikh and again this points out to the fact that you just don't uh, forget after making a pledge uh, not to not to come in the sh uh, sh company of your sheikh ever again you should keep coming to your to the company of your sheikh you know as much as you can another important uh, pointer towards this fact that how how important the sheikh is in your com in your life is that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala look at the whole history of uh, mankind allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whenever he uh, wanted to correct anybody any nation he always sent a messenger to him to that nation allah never sent a book without a messenger Allah did send some messengers without a book because messengers, the persons themselves were guided enough by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide the, the, the humanity. But there was never a single instance where you find that the, a book was revealed to the nation and there was no prophet with that. There was always a messenger and a prophet who would guide you on the matters of book. So this it highlights the importance of uh, sohbat e murshid the sheikh that there has to be a real physical person who can guide you to navigate through this complex path of uh, tasawwuf because as long as you are going on a straight path you may feel it is easy to to move on but when you hit the curve that that's where you are tested that are you able to navigate the curve safely or you just uh, fall off so that's where the sheikh is very important to guide you in your journey to to tasawwuf that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered in another beautiful ayat, Ya ayyuhal lazeena amanu taqullaha wa abtagu ilayhi al-wasila. Very clearly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says again, O oh believers, be fearful of Allah. And he does not stop there. He says, wa abtagu ilayhi al-wasila. And find a source towards him. Find a means towards him. You have already embraced iman. You are already fearful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then why do you have to find a a source towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this highlights the importance of our of our shuyukh in life that the source is very important the source guides you the source also gets power from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to to keep your path straight um, very good example of learning the wasila or the source is the rain where does rain come from we all know it comes from sky and Allah sends it but Allah sends it directly or with the help of a cloud. Allah orders clouds, right? Clouds drop the rain on us. So cloud is the, is the means, is a wasila, is a source of rain. But it is under the commandment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Likewise, our sheikh 
the faiz comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but the shaykh, but the faiz comes through your shaykh it cannot come directly through you it filters through you you don't have the enough power or capacity to absorb all that shaykh people may have people have died if they try to receive the faiz directly they cannot they cannot absorb it but when it comes filtered through shuyukh it gets uh, amenable enough for you to absorb it so it is very, very important that we give the importance to Sobat Sheikh, and I really appreciate that people have come from far and wide to join the company of our beloved Sheikh, who, who, who is such a blessed personality in our lives and who is so freely available to us. You know, it's uh, it's uh, no little thing to 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 look at that our sheikh is so freely available to guide us. You know, sometimes you have to wait for months to attend the company and sobat of your sheikh. But here, our sheikh is freely, openly available to guide us to ask uh, to answer our questions through his wisdom and through the through the barakat of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala that Allah is bestowing upon him all the time. Uh, this reminds me of a very brilliant incident in, in the life of uh, uh, a very uh, eminent and brilliant scholar of his time, Sheikh Rashid Ahmad Gangoi Rahmatullah. He was a very brilliant, eminent scholar, very learned person of his life. Uh, so he decided to join the Sohbat of, uh, of a very Sufi saint of his time, Hazrat Haji Imdadullah Mahajir Makki Rahmatullah. So given the big name of uh, Hazrat uh, Rashid Ahmad Gangoi Rahmatullah, many people people objected to him why why do you go to that self denying ascetic person who has uh, nothing in the world who looks a very sufi person why do you go and join his company so he gave a very uh, very uh, historic answer he said that uh, i um, i just memorize the list of tasteful goodies in my madrasa but i get to taste the flavor of those goodies in the sobat of my sheikh allah so you can learn as much as you can, but you cannot f learn the taste, you cannot taste that flavor unless you come in the sobat of uh, your uh, beloved sheikh. So my dear friends and uh, all attendees, uh, be attentive to your life, uh, you know, take care of your time and uh, be mindful of the fact that these uh, small points, uh, these small pointers in our lives uh, are very important for us to follow that how we can purify our hearts, what we should do to, to adopt the company of our sheikh and uh, what can we do to be ready for the world hereafter because the time of uh, death can come anytime. Uh, to anybody. Uh, inshallah, hopefully this conveys my message in a brief manner and may Allah give us ability to purify our hearts and love our beloved sheikhs uh, as is required by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ameen. Wa khiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.